I'm Lachlan, your ringmaster for today's game of Bold Choices and Business Dilemmas. All contenders Christian and JD will face off to decide whether to risk it, take bold action, or ditch it. Play it safe. And here's where it gets juicy. The loser, decided by your votes, will have to perform a mystery product pitch, selling an awful product idea like their career depends on it. Trust me, you do not want to miss this. Family feud. No. <laughs> Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey. <laughs> da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> Round one, the merger mayhem. First up, imagine this. You have an opportunity to merge with a big competitor, but it could mean losing some control of your brand. Do you risk it and take the leap or ditch it and keep your independence? Ditch it. I mean, ditch it because I don't know who the F they are. <laughs> All right, I would ditch it because A, I don't know anything about them. I've already uh, spent my time, um, you know, fighting against the grain with a partner and I don't want to do it again. It doesn't make any sense. I'll be great by myself. Somebody else can try it. I'm in the same boat. I'd ditch it for a lot of the same reasons of losing control, of having to split that control, or like any of those kind of things. Nah, that's not for me. Of one driving force, one one leading forward. I don't need to try to appease another person while giving up part of the control of my company. I'm, I'm good. I'm going to just stay where I'm at. All right, entrepreneurs, you've heard their pitches. Who's making the Spartan move? Vote now, or you might see one of these guys pitching invisible dog leashes. Who knows what's going to be pulled from the mystery box? Round two, the big marketing bet. Your team comes up with a crazy marketing campaign idea that's either going to go viral or flop. Do you risk it and run with it, or ditch it and stick to the basics? Risk it. Uh, I would risk it. I'd let it fly. Um, as long as it's not inappropriate and it stays in line with our values and what we're trying to promote, there's always, uh, there's always the good comes from being omnipresent online and uh, doing something different. So I'm going to risk it. JD! Well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll say... Man, that's tough. I think I'm going to go with ditch it on this one. Of... Unless they have a really thorough walkthrough for me of like what we're doing, of like, oh, it could be really viral and like it's a big surprise. I'm good. Um, I, need, I need to know what we're going to do so I can make sure that aligns with what we're driving towards and make sure that it's not completely somewhere off in the distance pushing something that's not what we're shooting for at this time. All right, folks, cast your votes. Who's got it right or who's about to pitch? You the next big thing, a self-watering shoe perhaps when you are gardening. Maybe, maybe not. If you watch Bridgerton, you might think that's a wonderful thing. Or Downton Abbey. Round three, the tech overhaul trap. Last round, you're considering a full tech overhaul for your company. New CRM, new systems, the whole nine yards. It's expensive and risky but could streamline everything. Do you risk it or ditch it? Ditch it. Ditch it 10 out of 10 times. I have already done it once. We lost a lot of traction, lost a lot of data, uh, spent a lot of money and didn't get anywhere. So let's go ahead and stick to one that is great. Uh, I do not need to change that one. JD. This one's hard because initially I was in the risk it category, but switching out all of our software makes me switch this to ditch it. I have been involved in multiple attempted changeovers of our CRM and such things, and every time it's a disaster. I did it with a big company previously, and I've done it with other companies, and it's always a huge task, a huge undertaking that is a huge problem at some point, and I have seen more revert back to the old software than stick with it. Get ready to hear both of them because I decided to be a mean host today. Both of them pitch you a portable nap pod. Stay tuned. 
so you can hear their pitches. Have you ever had too much to eat and needed to take a quick nap? I call it the itis. You might call it something else, but occasionally you need to just lay your head down. You ever had narcolepsy, passed out, hit your head? Now we don't have to worry about injuries. We don't have to worry about being uncomfortable. Let's bring along our portable nap pod everywhere we go. It fits in your satchel, throw it on the ground, take a nap, AC included. Act now while supplies last. <laughs> there are only 50 left in stock. <laughs> <laughs> when are you, you going to jump in? <laughs> jump in on that. That's totally where I was headed with this. Yeah, sorry. Um, Billy Mays here. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Sham, wow. Sham, How about wow. sleep now? <laughs> Your portable nap pods. <laughs> 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 Shamwell is old news. <laughs> Check out this. This is the Napomatic 3000. What's the Napomatic 3000, you ask? Well, the Napomatic 3000 is a portable nap system. Set it up in your office when you've had too much at lunch and need a quick nap, or maybe you're just a person who likes naps and want to nap in the park while you're walking your dog. Who knows? Set up the Napomatic in one step. Throw it, it'll pop out. Well, there you go. There's a nap -o -matic, And now you can have a quick nap wherever you are. <laughs> Why be awake when you could be asleep? <laughs> Sleep now in our portable nap pod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. The yeah, nap 3000. Do, do Everybody probably. who's anybody has a nap pod. Being awake is out, napping is in. Bye now. Like an Apple commercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Ridiculous. Didn't have